north of its name on that policy. Quiet, please. I, Cyrus J. Rutherford, being of sound mind and body, do hereby declare the following to be the preamble to my last will and testament. <clears throat> the disposition of my estate is of only slightly less interest to me than it is to you, my loving heirs. It has been divided among you. The largest share is to be $500,000, and the smallest, $1.50 to pay for the taxi from the station. So pay close attention, all of you. My sister Estelle, who disobeyed my wishes 20 years ago by marrying a nincompoop, named, I believe, Kenneth, and whom I've had the pleasure of not seeing since. Cyrus never changed a bit. And niece Margaret, whom I have never seen, which is probably just as well. I like that. My nephew, James Davis. I last saw him when he was an impertinent youth of 20. I do not like impertinence, and I did not like James. My niece, Carol Dunlap, although I despised her father, turned out to have somewhat better intelligence and a less selfish interest in her old uncle than others in the family. And the last of my living relatives, nephew Henry Rutherford and his wife, Mona. Henry, at least, has the virtue of bearing the Rutherford name, and he was a fairly good investment counselor, honest as far as I could find out. Mona wears too much makeup. I told you he didn't. Oh, like shut it. up. Go on, Mr. Gelman. And she seems to have waited with undue impatience for my demise. My faithful butler, Merkel, who for 20 years padded the household bills, and Matthews, who kept house for me in a haphazard sort of way. Professor Hilton, to whom I owe my knowledge and understanding of the secrets of the heavens. And finally, my lawyer, Morton Gelman. Uh, <clears throat> uh, well, that's about all, folks. The rest is just routine. Go ahead and read it. We're all just one big happy family. Yes, let's hear it. We want it. Whom I trust implicitly as far as I can throw an elephant. As you know, I have been an ardent student of the stars. I want to continue to be exposed to them. Therefore, I wish to be interred not underground, but in a glass-domed vault where they will evermore continue to shine down upon me. You are all to remain here as my guests until this vault is completed. After I have been safely interred, you may open my will, which is now sealed in the safe in the specimen room. Then you will learn how I have seen fit to reward you, one and all. But should this, my last wish, be disobeyed, and my body buried anywhere except in the above-mentioned vault, then the terms of the will shall be reversed, and those who are to get the large bequests will get the smallest, and vice versa. Furthermore, should any of you leave the grounds before I am safely interred in my vault, you will forfeit all rights to your legacies. I know you will find it difficult to live together, even for a few days. But this is my wish. So with these last words, I leave you to your squabbling, which, fortunately, I won't be able to hear. Of all the insulting and insane ideas. Yeah, I'll never hold up in a court of law. Please, please. It's all perfectly legal. They'll start work on the vault tomorrow. It should only be a matter of a few days. Looks as if you and I are in for the lion's share. You mean from what Uncle Cyrus said? <clears throat> this place gives me the creeping memes. I wish it were over with. You don't have to stay. Have you read the final will? Do you know who gets what? He drew it up himself. And nobody will read the will until he is properly interred. Well, if yeah, no let's right. not stand around in the presence of Uncle Cyrus's body and call about his will. I wouldn't call either if I'd spent 20 years stooging for a slice of it. I resent that. I meant you to, dear cousin. 